main point for entrepreneurs, not just in clean tech, but all over, is we kind of now know a lot of new things on how to build startups that we didn't even five years ago, is that we used to believe that startups were nothing more than smaller versions of large companies. And we now know that's a mistake. Large companies execute known business models, but startups, startups actually search for business models. And while we have 100 years of building tools for execution, we've just kind of discovered what the right tools are for search. And the reason why startups should care is that if you do uh, these tools and you use them, we could reduce the failure rate of early stage ventures. And that's a big idea, because I don't think there's any entrepreneur who wouldn't love a set of tools and techniques on how to fail less. And that's essentially what we teach entrepreneurs. Any industry as well, they're being taught in life sciences and clean tech, et cetera. Um, and, and the basic principles are, and, and the overall phrase or word for this is the lean startup. And there are three components, the three actual, actual things that you do. Uh, one is called business model design. It turns out instead of writing a business plan, like we have a series of facts, we actually use Alexander Osterwalder's business model canvas to say what you really have on day one is a series of untested hypotheses. And so we have entrepreneurs go through actually writing down all their hypotheses. And a business model is just a fancy word for what is it that you're going to deliver to your customers and how are you going to make revenue and profit for yourself. And the business model and this canvas talks about those nine components that make up any company from a startup to a large one. What's the value proposition? Fancy word for what product or service. Who's the customer? What's the channel? How are you creating demand? How are you going to make revenue? Who are the partners? What kind of resources, activities, and costs? Now, in the old days, we probably would have even stopped here saying, oh, we got this all down, now let's write it down. But we now know the second step, which is equally important, which was my contribution, which is this phase called customer development. And customer development starts from the inside is that there's no facts inside your building, so get the hell outside. And all it is is kind of a, a method of, well, I get outside, what am I supposed to do? And this is the what am I supposed to do steps to actually turn those hypotheses into facts. And then the third piece that make up the Lean Startup is something called Agile Engineering. And it simply says, you know, if you're an engineer, you desperately want to build your entire product all at once before you show it to anybody. But in fact, we now know that when you do that, there's about a 90 plus percent chance that you're going to have a ton of unwanted features and you're going to miss the right ones that customers wanted. So why don't we, in conjunction with this customer development process, build the product incrementally and iteratively so we're not getting unfinished products, but we're getting enough out to get customer feedback to test these hypotheses. So these three things, business model design, customer development, and agile engineering, is the new, new tool set for searching for a business model. And if you do that, it doesn't guarantee success, but as I said, it decreases your failure rate because you will find out very quickly whether you need to iterate or pivot. If you're a world-class founder, you are vision-driven because that's what it takes to get you up you know, at four in the morning or when everybody else is doubting or whatever, you need to be the keeper of the flame. And it used to be that we wanted, you know, 120% of your brain focused on that vision. I'll now contend we have enough data that says, no, we don't. We want about 99.7% focused on that vision and that drive to that goal. But I want about 10 neurons in your brain left over to say, what if you're wrong? And, and let's do the testing part of your run. I don't want to slow you down. I don't want to make you doubt yourself. But I want you to ask a set of, uh, uh, of questions to yourself that says, what are some very cheap and fast experiments that we could put in place to say, should we be doing this or should we be doing something else? And how do we quickly find that out?